From 1962 to 65, there was a television series titled Truth or Tall Tales. The show was formatted similar to a talk show with the host interviewing three guests in front of a live studio audience. The only difference being that this was a game show. The three guests were contestants who would tell about their lives or experiences and the audience had to decide whether they were telling the truth or spinning a tall tale. If the audience guessed correctly, the contestant would lose. If the audience was wrong, then the contestant would win $500, $4,000 in today's money. Out of the 30 episodes produced between the years 62 and 65, one had been lost since initial viewing and has never been found. However, a transcript purported to be from said episode was recently discovered. It is reproduced here. Truth or Tall Tales, 1963, October 8th, host, Paul Price. Guest 1, Simon Cutler, brackets, Truth. Guest 2, Jake Harmon, brackets, Tall Tale. Guest 3, Oscar Owens, brackets, question mark. The episode begins with Simon Cutler, a 34-year-old circus lion tamer who actually lives with the animals he tames, having raised them as cubs from birth. The audience said that he was lying and ended up winning the $500. Next was Jake Harmon, who claimed to be an airshow wing walker. The audience, however, didn't believe him and he lost. The final contestant was Oscar Owens, whose story was so unbelievable that the episode was confiscated a month after air. Price Our contestant is Oscar Owens. Please give him a round of applause. Owens, a rather ordinary man in his mid-thirties, walks out wearing a finely tailored suit, shakes Price's hand, and sits in the waiting chair. Welcome to the show, Mr. Owen. Thanks for having me, Paul. So, Oscar, may I call you Oscar? Of course. So, Oscar, there seems to be some kind of controversy with my producer backstage with you, especially pertaining to your story. Care to tell the audience what you told him? Sure. I told him that I am a time traveler. The audience giggles at this. A time traveler? Correct. Can I ask you, what year do you originate? Uh, sure, I'm here to tell the truth, right? I come from the year 2025. So, roughly 60 years from now? Yes. And how did you get here from then? It's a bit technical, but... I'll try my best to explain. I'm all ears, Price says with a smirk. Audience laughs. People think of the past as, well, in the past, but that's not really true. Time exists all around us. It's just that we can't see it. In my time, we can manipulate gravity, creating a singularity, a small distortion in space-time. When it was first attempted in 2012, it was wild and unpredictable. So to balance it, the team launched the satellite into orbit around 10,000 years ago. In a high orbit, this satellite has been floating around up there ever since. In fact, it's up there right now. The artificial intelligence on board acting as a beacon for us. Us? Oh yes, I'm sorry, I forgot. My organization, the Scribes. Scribes? Yes, the Scribes are historians who travel to points in history, pivotal points, to document what actually happened for future generations. I see. And your mission is to come on my show? No, my mission is about a month from now. Unfortunately, I miscalculated my arrival time, 
and now I need to wait for said mission. Can't you just travel back home and try again? Unfortunately, it's not that simple. Time travel is a very tricky thing to nail down. I'd equate it to throwing darts at a dartboard blindfolded. How so? The controller, the thing that monitors the timeline, is a quantum computer. A very powerful computer that utilizes quantum mechanics to do calculations. Even so, traveling to a specific moment in time is tricky. Anything can throw a traveler off course. Such as? Gamma ray bursts? Oh, uh, what? When a star goes supernova, it explodes and sends out twin jets, beams of powerful gamma radiation, like a geyser that travels so fast that they actually warp space-time. Sort of like space tsunamis. You don't want to get caught in one of those. You'd end up in the Cretaceous, getting chased by a Tyrannosaurus. So, what do you plan to do in our time, until the time of your mission? Besides being on your show? Yes. Experience life in 1963. From what I've seen so far, it's pretty... relaxed compared to life in 2025. How so? Um... I see kids playing in the streets, couples going for walks on a sunny day, and people watching TV shows. Why is that weird? We don't really do that kind of stuff in my time. What do you mean? Kids work. Well, I don't mean work at a job or anything, but they spend all day inside on their studies, hooked up to the net. A uh, net? No, not a net. The net. The internet. An interconnected network of computers used by people all over the world. People watch movies, play games, chat with friends, buy things all from the comfort of their living room. Why? Because it's easy. Why go to the theatre or the store when you can watch a film from your couch and get good food delivered to your door by drone, flying robots? You don't seem too enthused about it. Why do you think I took a job as a scribe? While other people sit on their sofas watching boring TV, I'm learning and experiencing history firsthand. About that, your mission. Can you say anything about that? I don't see why not. It's going to happen regardless of what I say. Where is it? Where does this mission take place? Uh, right here in Dallas. Why right here? What's so important about Dallas, Texas? Right now? Nothing. As I said, I'm early. November 22nd. Now that's a date people will remember. Why? Because on that day, a quarter of a mile from this very studio in Dealey Plaza, John F. Kennedy will be assassinated. I, I'm sorry, what did you say? John F. Kennedy, the President of the United States, will be shot in the head by a sniper and killed. That's not something to joke about. I'm not joking. The presidential motorcade will drive through Delay Plaza and a sniper who had taken up perch in the Texas School Book Depository will assassinate the president. A wave of commotion began to ripple through the audience as angered shouts drew ire at Owens as a live broadcast was cut. After a few commercials, Price, looking visibly shaken, addressed the audience both in studio and at home. Ladies and gentlemen, I offer my most sincere apologies for what the final contestant had said. During the break, our security escorted Mr. Owens out of the building, and the authorities were called. Unfortunately, by the time they arrived, Owens had left. When I started this program, I had hoped people would not abuse it, but as we have seen today, people with negative thoughts exist. Don't let the ravings of a damaged mind fill you with fear. The president is very safe if and when he comes to Dallas. 
Unfortunately, Paul Price was wrong. 45 days later, at 12.30pm, Kennedy was indeed assassinated by Lee Harvey Oswald as a crowd watched in horror. A crowd that included Oscar Owens, who could be seen wearing his suit. After the assassination, an unnamed producer of the show called the Secret Service and handed over all copies of the episode and documents signed by Oscar Owens. A copy of his driver's license was deemed a fake and no one by the name of Oscar Owens fit the description of the mystery man. All evidence of Oscar Owens was scrubbed from the records by the time of the Warren Commission and to this day, no one knows what truly happened.